Okay, so Taylor played anti-hero acoustically for the first time. And in today's video, I wanted to break down live how she's playing it in this concert and show you guys how to play it like she does. As far as I know, this is the first time that she's played this acoustically just with a guitar. And I actually found out about it from some of my patrons over on my Patreon page. So thank you to them for letting me know that she did this. And the reason they let me know is because I said in my Midnight's reaction that if she did any version of the Midnight's songs on acoustic to let me know because those are the videos I love the most and I like trying to teach you guys and break down how she plays the songs on guitar. So she finally did it. This video has the, it says anti-hero and the city cover. So I'm guessing that she does two songs in this because it's also like nine minutes long. So if that's the case, I'm going to teach anti-hero in this video and then I'll probably post the second half of the city, just more of like a reaction to it on, uh, on my Patreon page. So go on over there if you, if, uh, if you want to check that out. Anyways, let's jump into this. This is anti-hero live from the 1975 concert in London. Here we go. This is like a cell phone video. <laughs> you might have to bleep that one out. She knows how to build the the anticipation. She always has been so good at that. Is it okay if I sing? It's a beautiful white Gibson. I think that's a J185 uh, mini. I was thinking of doing one that I'd never played live before. Stop it yet. This is such the best part of the song. Okay. Um So let's go back to the first of all, she again, she always Taylor is such a great rhythm guitar player. Like there's so many lessons to be learned in the way that she can control an audience just with an acoustic guitar. This is a perfect example of that. Let's go back to where she starts in the verse. So the song originally, I think the song is, I think she's playing it in the original key, which is, is, was in the key of uh, the key of E major. You could play this song without a capo, and the uh, the main chord progression goes from an if you're in the key of E, goes from A to E to B to C sharp to C sharp minor. So that's a that's a four one five six. And this is I have a video uh, coming out soon about this. This is a chord progression that Taylor loves, and she always uses, and it's so effective. Like trying to think what other like. For example, she uses this in, um, um, what is, we are never, ever, ever getting back together. That one goes back to the, uh, to the five, but it's the same type of general pattern. We are never, ever, ever getting back together. And then like even more recently in, in songs on uh, Midnight's outside of Antihero, like I think it's Maroon and uh, Da -da, the one I was dancing with in New York. No shoes. I, I don't know the words well, but I'm pretty sure that's the chord progression. 
that she also uses in that song. So it's a chord progression that she loves. In this video though, instead of playing it with no capo, she capos on the fourth fret and plays key of C chord shapes. This is effectively an E major, but since you put the capo on the fourth fret, you play it like a C major. And I think in a lot of a lot of this verse, she is doing a lot of muted strumming. So let's just go back a little bit. Okay, so to start, let's, let's just break down the chord progression. So in the key of C, you know, with the capo on the fourth fret, the chord progression goes from an F major to a C major, to a G major, and then to an A minor. So that's your four, one, five, six. And I'm almost 95% sure that that's the chord progression for the entire song. And so, I play an F like this. Taylor often will play it with just these. These are bottom three strings on the fourth, the third, and the second. Either way will be fine. C major is played like this. And then G is actually interesting because I think she only often will play, like cover that top string, so that low E string. And just strum like the top, the, the six, the four, and the three. That five is kind of muted. So that's kind of like your G string and then A minor. And I think she actually plays a lot of like A minor seven. So it's just these two fingers here. And then like I mentioned, a lot of it's muted strumming for the verse. So it's, I think it kind of sounds something like this. kind of get the idea so you're mostly down you know when on those down strums you're muted and then when you up strum it's really the accent on that second and third string and there's some hammer-ons in there too like on the F I'm hammering onto the third string of the second fret on the C I'm hammering onto the fourth string G and A minor not really hammering on although you can hammer onto the A minor like that um, I do that sometimes. If you haven't done muted strumming before, this might be a little difficult, but it's really just resting the meaty part of your palm on the strings, you know? And it's more of that bass. It's more of, more emphasis on those top strings for that bass. And then on the up strums, that's where you kind of get that, like, that treble. So it's those, the second and third string. kind of like that and I think honestly that's how she she strums almost for the entire verse so if you were gonna like count that out you know usually I would go like one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and and then if you wanted like the down up although I'm kind of against against memorizing down up patterns because again if you've watched my videos before you know that strumming is way more nuanced than playing the same strumming pattern the whole way through but like the general down up pattern would be like a down down up down up down down up down up down down up down down up down up down down up down up down see like that's even con confusing for me to do so i it's just you got to hear where the the accents are so i'm going accent on the one one and two and three and four and 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 kind of something like that again it's not easy this is why taylor is such a good rhythm guitar player because these are these are not easy strumming patterns they're they're she's really good at this for a reason um but i think that's kind of what she's doing that's just you know it's singing but <laughs> And you can hear hear the remember when I talked about like the up strum, you can hear that treble of the second and third string. You can hear it right here. On the up strum. You can always hear it. I wake up screaming for dreaming. 
Yeah, same thing here. Right here, though, that last section going in, into the chorus, she just stayed on that G string. Continuous down strums there. How many did she do? Down, 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 down. down. Now into the chorus. Yeah, I think that's what she's doing. So again, I'm a little rusty, guys. I haven't played guitar in a minute, so forgive me if I'm a little rusty, but it's the same chord progression in the chorus, although she did the down strums leading up to it, and then in the chorus, she does this all the times. It's the, the dynamics of playing muted in the verses and then opening up the strumming pattern in the chorus. So in the chorus, it's really almost like the same type of right hand strumming pattern, but it's just, it's opened up. So you do down, up, 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 down. And here I'm accenting. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. And then it's just faster than, than that. So you go. And then you kind of add in those hammer-ons too that I covered in the verse. On the F. On the, uh, on the C. None really on the G. And then you kind of hammer on to that A minor too. So that's a little more difficult just because of the like the high speed nature of it, but that's really it's the same chord progression. And if you just kind of break that down and really play, you know, focus on where those accents are in the right hand, you'll get it down. And then at the end of it, she kind of did that that all down strum pattern again, going into the uh, the second verse. So. Right here. That's just staying on G. So all of this is still the same as as the first verse. It's muted. It's that same that same strum pattern and the same chord progression. So right there, that that little pre-chorus thing she did. Only downstrums. That was that was a little different. So right here, downstrums. Best line in the song. And then just kind of opens up randomly there at the end of it. You know, she was just going. She played that chord progression twice on the last G and on the last A minor. That's when she kind of opened up and did the. And now I think she's back in the uh, the muted like normal verse strum pattern. Oh no, she's wide open. So this is what I'm talking about when I when I refer to like nuance. Leading into the first chorus, that's when she did the It's me. Hi. This one, she just did the normal pattern and went right into it. Right here. A minor. So 
right there you can really hear the strumming pattern. This is probably one of the best parts of the video so far. Yeah, so it's... Something like that, you know, it's, again, it, there's so much nuance, guys, that it's it's honestly, like, not even fair to try and, like, say, this is what you do, down up, down up in this section. She plays with so much just feel and personality that this is kind of just like the framework of how to get close. But again, don't, do not get so concerned about memorizing the exact down up pattern because then you just sound like a robot playing guitar. As you practice, as you get better, as you can pick things up like this, you'll develop an ear for it. And you'll just be able to recognize like where, where are the down beats, where are the up beats, and how do I strum to make it sound like that. Kind of a breakdown right now in it. So still kind of like that muted-ish strumming pattern in the verse here, but it's a little more, she got so big in the chorus there that now she's bringing us all the way back down. It's probably the probably the quietest part of the song so far. And I would bet that this last chorus is gonna have the most energy. She knows, she knows how to do these setups. And this is what makes her so freaking good at solo acoustic guitar performances. One of the best, if not the best. There it is, the build. <laughs> okay, that's... She's such a good guitar player, like... So right there, she's just doing 16th notes on the G. So she did the first two chords in the, in the chorus. And then just did the, the 16th, the constant down up, down up on the G. Did a very prompt down strum and then muted everything. And now she's going to the, into that final it's chorus. Me. I, I'm the problem, it's me. It's me. I, I'm the problem, it's me. It's me. I, everybody agrees, everybody agrees. Gosh, she's so good, dude. It's so crazy. I want to go back. I mean, it's unbelievable, seriously, how good she is. She just does all these little things that when you when you add them all up, it, it's a masterful performance. Just the way, how to, you know how hard it is to keep a, an audience engaged? Just you, your voice, and a, an acoustic guitar. Unbelievably hard. And Taylor just like, you could watch that forever. It's, I mean, it's amazing. One thing I noticed in that final chorus, after she did the... Then what she did is she did a lighter like verse or a, kind of like a lighter, well, what is it? That's the chorus, right? It's me, hi, I'm the problem. Kind of the pre, kind of the pre-chorus, right? She, um, she did more of like that. So what she did and she likes to do this is she'll pick the first, like the, the root note in the chord, and then kind of just strum the the, uh, the other strings. But she really emphasizes picking that root chord in, or the root note in the chord. So the F. It's kind of hard to explain that, but the best way I think I can put it is just you pick that that root note. So on on the F, she's doing it on the uh, the fourth string of the third fret. On the C, it's the fifth string of the third fret. G, sixth string of the third fret, and then that open A, the fifth string. And so you pick it. And 
then you kind of down strum and then up strum right after it. just a way to kind of mix up the the dynamics of the right hand and then going into that final chorus she I mean she just opens up completely there <laughs> And then, okay, so then in this final one too, she did that down strum again. Uh, it's me. You know, just like she did in that first pre chorus leading in, into the chorus. And then the, it's me. Hi. I'm the problem, it's me. So on the F and on the C, she did those single strum kind of shot note, you know, those shot strums. And then opens up just like the other ones. Me. Hi. I'm the problem, it's me That tea time Everybody agrees And then continues that And then, yeah, to end it, you know, she goes Just, it's just, you know, more of that single, str sh single shot strumming and just unbelievable. Ends on the A minor. I mean, I could go on about this forever. I don't want to make this video 30 minutes long, but it's, it's stuff like this that makes her the best, one of the best artists in the world. This is what makes her so uniquely talented. She wrote the song likely like that in a room with an acoustic guitar. And I think the true test of a song is if you can play on a, an acoustic guitar and it's still a good song, then it's probably going to be really good when you do, if you have a good producer and that can add just the other elements to it. And that is totally the case for this song. So just to kind of recap, guys, capo fourth fret, standard tuning on guitar, same chord progression the entire song. F, C, G, A minor. I won't go over the uh, the strumming patterns again, but you know, it was kind of like that down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Something like that, so. kind of something like that. So yeah, I mean, unreal. And again, like I mentioned, uh, this is gonna be the end of the YouTube video, but if you're still interested, I'm gonna just listen and react to her covering the city by the 1975 over on Patreon. Link will be in the description. So um, thank you guys. As always, let me know if you have any questions on, you know, specifics or how to play that a little or something doesn't make sense. You know, it's always, it's not easy for me to make these tutorials like reacting to the song and then trying to teach you guys in real time, but um, you guys seem to enjoy them. So I hope, I hope they're helpful. Anyways, thank you. And uh, I'll see you in the next one. Peace.